Welcome to InfoGamer, my name's Mark, and today I wanna to show you how to create an explosion physics effect for the bomb we've been creating in this playlist. If you haven't created this bomb game object yet, you're gonna to wanna to restart this playlist and learn how to do that. So in this video, we're gonna do, we're gonna show you how to do the explosion physics effect, which will just be the force that sends game objects flying away from our explosion. But we're gonna do it through scripting. So let's show you how to do that. It's gonna be really awesome and a lot of fun and I hope you guys learn how to do it so you can put it in your own games. All right, I've got my window project open. It's got my bomb asset right there. And I'm gonna go over to the project window and right click create and go to C sharp folder. And let's rename this explosion. Let's open that in Visual Studio. A really cool thing about Unity is that it has some pre-built functions for us to use. One that we're gonna use today is actually an explosion function called add explosion force. And it's got five parameters that we're gonna adjust to create this physics effect that will send game objects flying in certain angles or we can have them send all the same direction but we can all adjust we can adjust that with the five parameters that i'm going to show you um, the parameters are called explosion force explosion position explosion radius upwards modifier and mode but i can explain all those um, as we go along so this first variable, we're going to start declaring variables that will hold the parameters that we're going to insert into our add explosion force. So let's uh, type public game object. And the first one is going to, we're going to name it bomb, just because we're going to drag in the bomb asset into the inspector. And then we're going to pull the position off of the bomb game object to be the position of our explosion. The next line of code is going to be a float variable. Actually, the next three lines are going to be float variables because the values of these parameters only hold numbers. So public float, and we can name this first one power. This is going to be the power of our explosion, the force that the force of our explosion that sends game objects. So let's actually set it the force right now to point or 10.0 f. That's how you do float values. Okay, public float. The next one is gonna be radius. And we're gonna set it equal to 5.0 F. That's gonna be the radius of our sphere of our explosion. Okay, public float. The next one is up force. And we can set this one at 1.0 F. Okay, up force is pretty silly. It essentially isn't realistic, but people add it in movies and other video games because it adds a level of uh, dramatic effect. So the explosion happens here, your game object's here, and in real life, if, they explode, if it exploded, your game object would just fly straight off like that. But up force will actually lift it off the ground a little bit as it explodes to make it more entertaining or more dramatic. But it's all good. We'll just put that value in there so we can change it. We can always turn it back to zero if we want to. This first line of code in the detonate function, we want to actually set our position of our bomb game object to our explosion position. So we need a new vector three that we're gonna name um, explosion position. And I bet you guys can figure out the rest of this line. We're setting it equal to our bomb's position. So if you don't remember, it's bomb.transform.position because bomb is the variable game object that will have our bomb game object in it. And then transform or dot transform dot position is how we grab the position on that game object. Okay, now that we, let's make sure that the variable is spelled right. This vector three explosion position Sure, that looks right. Um, this next line of code is pretty awesome. We're actually going to set up a collider array that's going to hold a bunch of colliders. Um, so type collider and then square brackets. And then we're going to name it colliders. We're going to set it equal to 
physics dot overlap sphere. And then the overlap sphere has two parameters, which is the position, which is going to be our explosion position, and our radius. So the parameters of physics.overlapsphere, it needs a position and it needs a radius of the sphere to see how big it is, to make it how big. So the cool thing about overlap sphere is it actually brings in every kind of collider that is inside that sphere and stores it in this collider array. It's really, really cool. So once again, physics.overlapsphere with the parameters of its position and how big the sphere is, which is the radius, it's going to pull in whatever that radius size is, what any game object that has a collider on it, it's going to pull it into this array and it's going to store it there. So we're actually going to access the array, but for now we're going to do a for each. So let's put brackets over here for the for each loop. And then the argument of the for each loop is going to, it's going to be collider hit in colliders. So for each collider hit in colliders, we're going to run this code. So each individual collider will have this code run for it. All right, let's declare a rigid body. And we're going to be setting up this rigid body with all of the colliders that it become that it accesses. So I'll show you. I'll just type the code first. Equals hit dot get component. And then we want to access the rigid body. Whoop. We don't want to name it rib, we want to name it RB. Alright, this line of code, we're we've declared a rigid body and we're naming it RB. And then we're saying the hit collider get the component off the hit collider which is the rigid body. We want to get the component off each collider, and then we're going to put a add explosion force on that rigid body. So rb dot add explosion force, and then this is where we type in the parameters of the explosion force. And if you remember, our parameters are up here that we've created, and um, right here, this explosion position. And the first one is actually going to be the force of the explosion. The second one is the power or the position of it. So explosion position. And then the third one is going to be the radius. And the fourth one will be the up force. So we can just type up force in there. And the last one is the um, add explosion force mode and you type that in with force mode it's already giving me the hint here force mode dot and it's giving me the four modes already that I can choose from and it's really easy because you can just click on these and it gives you a description of what is actually happening with these different modes but right now we're just gonna do the impulse because that's the one we want for this explosion Okay, I missed a line of code here. We want to only run this explosion, this add explosion force, if it has a rigid body on it. So an easy way to do that is just type if, and in the argument we can type rb does not equal no. And that's how you type in not equal, and then no. Let's put some brackets. Okay, awesome. Now all we have to do is call this function we created, detonate, in our, our fixed update function, and then it's going to work. So let's, uh, there's some other things we need to type as well, but fixed update, we're going to change that. Update to fixed update, delete the note, and 
So uh, once again, we only want this bomb to explode if the bomb is actually on the screen. So we need to check if the bomb is on the screen. So we can type if, if bomb equals enabled, then we want to call this function. So let's invoke um, and then put parentheses with quotes and type detonate. And then comma, oop, after the quotes, comma, and we want it to wait five seconds because that's how long I've put the animation on there for this one. Now remember, I invoke needs to be capitalized. Okay, awesome. I think we're ready to go. Let's hit save, control S, and go back to Unity. Okay, let's grab our script and drag it onto our main camera. It could really be on anything um, that's going to be on the scene that's active all the time. So putting it on the camera is totally fine. And then we'll go to, we'll click on the main camera and there's this bomb position, this bomb game object that it's asking for. We're gonna wanna drag in our bomb game object there. Then it's gonna pull off the position in our code right here because bomb.transform.position because we're dragging it into this spot right here. Okay, now that the script is on the main camera and we've dragged the bomb into the bomb position, we've checked the power and the up force, all of that looks good. Let's go to the hierarchy, right click 3D object cube. And let's add a rigid body to this add component, just type rigid body, select it. Now we've got a rigid body. Let's drag it up. And let's actually duplicate it a couple times. Let's duplicate it three times. And let's drag this one over here. Okay, we're ready to hit play. All right, the bomb starts blinking and it should blink within f five seconds and it sent all our game objects flying. It's pretty awesome. It's really, really cool. The uh, another really cool thing about it is if you move this cube out farther, the radius should have less of an effect on it. So I'm going to zoom out. Yeah, it didn't even affect that because it wasn't in the explosion radius. All right, that's it for this video. We created some awesome physics effects that send other game objects flying. We only need to create a couple more animations, a couple more particle effects, and we're gonna have a really cool looking bomb that we'll be able to add into our own games. Or if you weren't able to understand all the code in this video, I highly recommend re-watching it or going back through the code, looking at the code on the documentation on the Unity page. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks again. We'll talk to you guys later when we're gonna create some particle effects and some more animations.